Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Red Bull Qualifier, the first of its kind. For those who don't know what it is, basically it was a ladder qualification. So you qualify through ladder and spoiler alert, this is exactly who made it. It's not much of a spoiler alert though because you can't go back and watch the sets. Again, it played through ladder. Today we're going to be talking about, it's going to be a discussion video. I'm going to include the, the chat on, on stream, but first I want to show you guys what's going on here. Uh, so we're going to talk about a few things. Number one, we're going to talk about who qualified. Number two, we're going to talk about how the qualifier went through the ladder. You know, uh, how, you know, should be do it again how, how how did it go the pros and cons that kind of stuff and then we'll also talk about um you know what's next for red bull as well of course this is the one hundred fifty thousand dollar tournament taking place in spain in october and that's what people were playing for so uh, i know youtube voice chat i know i have to every youtube video has to have the youtube voice uh so start we'll talk about who qualified so again everyone can compete it was an open qualifier this is the the final four leary number one he he, he dominated he just you know played so well camped his elo last few days um and just had, you know, the highest elo. Uh, then you had me at number two. I had second highest elo. Tried to go for first, but ended up losing. Then you had Sebastian at number three and MBL at number four. But it didn't stop there. Yo and Vinchester especially, they pulled, Yo pulled a 15-hour grind in the last day to try to pass MBL. And he was one or two games short. He just needed one more win and he would pass MBL. So the difference between MBL and Yo was $9,000 and a trip to Spain because MBL gets that and Yo gets zero. And Yo pulled 15 hours and ends up at zero just to show you guys the stakes that the players are working with vinchester also in the same position as yo he pulled in a bunch of hours at the end uh then some other honorable mentions to talk about heart to toe atcm doubt uh you know kapoch mihai andy all of those players even like i can go down the list right show you guys some names uh if you guys want to check that out all of those players especially like the next hen here uh put in a lot of hours played a lot of games and they just fell a little short again like 1900 plus we had, a, we had 13 people above 1900 the top four was you know around 2k1 as as far as the cutoff um really insane tournament now we're going to move on and talk about uh how this qualifier played out and we're going to include the chat so i'll start with my thoughts okay so what we're comparing this qualifier to is uh compared to a standard qualifier so a standard qualifier has a bracket and it's played out like a tournament you have one chance you go in schedule time you win you move on you lose your out okay that's a standard qualifier maybe double elimination something like that could you know could be good but uh, otherwise you know not much let me just fix my camera a little bit here all right, that should be better. Uh, but otherwise, you know, single elimination, double em elimination, that's what the qualifier usually looks like. So in the latter qualifier, it was different. They gave us two weeks, or no, they gave us like three months, actually, but it came down to the last like two, three weeks. They gave us like three months to race on the ladder and the top four ELOs, which I just showed you who they were, uh, they qualify and the rest get nothing. So let me start with my thoughts and we'll get into some discussion here. Number one, when this was first announced, I was kind of an apologist. I was really excited for it. Everyone else, all the other players were saying it's terrible it's gonna be bad it's unfair and i was saying hey i actually am looking really forward to this ladder qualifier because i play a lot of ladder myself and i think it's healthy to have an active ladder i think that's good um the thing is though it didn't exactly turn out as i expected so keep that in mind i really enjoyed the idea of a ladder qualifier but as it got closer and closer my opinions actually changed but we'll talk about the pros and cons i can tell you from now it's not all good and it's not all bad um last thing i want to talk about before we hop into the pros and cons is that leading up to this I was really excited and I planned to stream every single day and stream my whole progress and even pull like 15 hour streams. I was ready to do the whole thing. I thought it was going to be a lot of games, a lot of people playing and a really good time and good time for stream content as well. Didn't turn out like that. Let's talk about why. So first thing, um, what ended up happening? What ended up happening is that players played in the last two weeks. And on top of that, we saw a lot of players going for only select opponents. They don't queue into anyone. They queue into only the people that they want to play against. And they can see, you know, who's playing because they see who's you know 27 minutes ago yo played so he might be queuing nbl played two hours ago so he's probably done sebastian probably went to sleep you know they, they'd see these websites and they'd conclude so people were actually picking games and they were not queuing just to play the game which meant that you didn't always have games another thing that was kind of a bad sign is that there weren't that many people playing again this is the top 25 and maybe another 25 like 50 people you had maybe 50 people playing and really only the top 10 at the end were really competing uh, maybe top 15 otherwise people dropped off so we'll start with the cons we'll start with the negative part of it the the negative parts of this qualifier was people selecting opponents not a lot of games being played and quite frankly just not that much activity not that much of a race for the elo because it was it only came down to just a few people and the reason for this is that there was no prizes for number five to number 15 or number five to number 25 so if we were to do this again for sure you would need to include you would need to include some other prizing on the ladder because that gives incentive 
incentives for people to play. So if you gave from like number five to number 25, uh, some prize pool, or even number five to number 10, <clears throat> all of a sudden you have a lot more people playing. So the race at the end would get a lot more intense. So I think that's one way to fix that, you know, that, that bad side that there was just simply not a lot of people playing. For context, the last day came down to just Yo Vinchester, for example. And so the Red Bull ladder in general sounded like a really good idea with everyone racing. In reality, it came down to just a few people racing and not everybody racing, which is, I think, you know, a, a clear downside to the system. Another con is that because it's like, <clears throat> because it's the highest rating and not current rating, people had incentive to camp and not play, which took away even more players from the from the pool, basically. But that, that's like the same thing. Even if you make it current rating, it would still be the case. So like not a lot of people playing top four camping. There's like literally just a few people playing at the end. Like that's all it came down to. Another downside I want to talk about is sieves. One of the biggest downsides to this ladder was that everybody was going for the best sieve on the map. It would be Byzantines, Incas, Saracens. Those three sieves saw like 90% of the playing. Maybe Georgians, maybe Bohemians a little bit. There's maybe like three to five sieves being played or mirror matches. And I think that's a really big downside because it made it boring for the viewers, which comes back to my main point. I plan to stream this. All right. I plan to stream the entire journey. And what I realized is if I'm on stream, number one, nobody will play me because they see that I'm queuing. So they just avoid me. Or if they want to play me, they counter pick me. So they either don't play me or they, you know, they just pick mirror sieves or you know, it's the same sieve matchups and the viewers will get bored. So I think a huge downside to this is the fact that the, the, the sieves were very limited and it didn't truly test who was the best Empire War player. It basically tested who's the best Saracen player. That's what it came down to. 90% of games were Saracens or Byzantines. And so it felt like a limited way to make a qualifier. A lot of people were one tricking. Leary played nothing but Saracens. Sebastian played nothing but Saracens. I played pretty much nothing but mirror match or Saracens. And BL, same thing. Saracens, maybe Byzantines. Uh, Yo mixed it up. He brought Spanish Huns. Like props to Yo for mixing it up. But as you can see, it was a lot of, you know, one dimensional sieve setting. So those are the three major cons, in my opinion. Not a lot of players, no prizing for number five to 25 and the same sieves over and over again. Okay. Those are the three biggest cons that I think prevented this from being a major success. So if I want to see this again in the future, I definitely want to have those issues addressed. Um, now, what are the pros of the ladder qualification? Number one, open to everyone. I think that's a very fair way to do it. Number two, brings activity to our scene, whether you like it or not. It might have been mirror matches, but there was a lot of games played, a lot of games played. Um, and, and number three, I think it keeps the viewers engaged. You know, viewers were following up the journey. They were, you know, keeping up with the Red Bull, um, you know, with, with, with the ladder. It, it was very engaging and it made the scene you know, quite alive. And I really enjoyed that. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, so that's my take on the pros and cons. Now, whether I want to see this again in the future or not, my official take right now, my opinion can change. My official take right now is I'd rather not see it again for the sole reason that I think it's a lot of demand on the players. People were putting in like 500 games within a short period of time. And I think although the reward is very high, like the $9,000, whoever qualified, it's worth it for sure. But then whoever didn't, it feels like a really big time sink that I think it's really hard to justify in our scene to, to just ask people to play like literally 500 games and get nothing out of it. So I don't want to see it again. But if I do want to see it again, I'd want to have those things addressed. And some ideas I have real quick, I'll go through them. Number one, make it so there's civ bans on every map. For example, you get into a game, right? On every map, before you get start every game, they ban out 20 of your civs on the tournament ladder. So you have to pick between the, the remaining civs. And number two, they ban out mirror. You can't go mirror. So you have to pick a civ and you have to think about what civ you want to go. If they do that, it would make things more interesting. And then they also need to give prizing to top five to 25 or something like that. They have to give some additional prizing so people aren't left with nothing. So if we see it again, I'd want those two things to be addressed. Me personally, I would rather just see regular qualifications. And that is a really interesting conclusion to arrive to. I didn't think I'd arrived to this conclusion. I was the guy most excited for this. So this is really, I went to 180 degrees with my opinion on the ladder qualification. I was really excited. Then I was like, oh, this is not great. I'm not going to stream it. It's not that, you know, not the great content. It's a lot of mirrors. And at the end, I was like, hey, I'd rather not see this again. So I feel like that's pretty much all I had to say. Let's go ahead and take it to the chat now. You guys have been dropping your opinions here and there, but let's open up some Q&A guys on the topic. Um, and uh, let's see what you guys have to say. So first uh, comment from the teacher. I feel like it's not fair. For example, Yo won 69% of games against NBL. NBL qualified while Yo did not. Also, Yo won 62% against Sebastian. Uh, congrats to everyone. Happy for your hair up. That's a good point. Uh, in, in the end, Yo might have performed better against NBL Sebastian, but because 
because it's a ranked ladder, you know, MVL performed better against the other people. So that's just how it, that's just how it works. It's just matchups. For viewers, this was more exciting than watching a qualifier. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, definitely, definitely did come down to a very exciting finish. I think if you make those changes, the ladder is more fun to watch for viewers. Yeah, so maybe those few changes can make the idea good for, for the future. It was an interesting experiment, but yeah, let's just go back to regular qualifier. Makes sense. Force top eight players to play a minimum amount of games per day to avoid camping. Ooh, that's a decent idea, but I'm not really a huge fan of it. I'm not really a huge fan of that idea because that <clears throat> that keeps people glued to their chairs. I think it is fairish, but too brutal. Makes sense. Yeah. What do you think about making it a five day ladder race? Therefore, it isn't a time sink and no downtimes. The problem with making it only a five day race is that, you know, someone might be busy those five days and then can't play. But that's a decent idea as well. I think one tournament having it isn't bad. Makes sense. I did AR. What's up? Thank you for the sub, bro. I appreciate it. And thank you, Joni, earlier for the five gifted subs. Really appreciate that too. What if you gave players a maximum number of games per day? I think that's bad because then you can get matched up against lower lower elo players and it just wouldn't work the mirrors and the lack of incentive for 10 to 16 to keep playing were the worst parts for me i agree yeah definitely something i you know i, I brought up and i think that sort of really killed it in in a lot of ways they should ban the skirms before next red bull we saw so many skirms we saw so many skirms um yeah i don't think you can make it random sieves either because then it would come down to a lot of like rng so i don't think it, I, I think it can't be random sieves but it has to have some kind of like sieve ban set up and maybe prevent mirror or something like that you could also add a elo decay for the highest elo but again and that just kind of forces people to play artificially, which feels weird. Yeah. It felt a little bit like Hunger Games, by the way. It felt a little bit like Hunger Games with people just going in and like, it, it's just like do or die. Like the top four get everything and the bottom guys get nothing. It's it's kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy. All right. Last comment here. Give the capability of banning sieves and no mirrors allowed unless they specifically select it unknowingly. I think, yeah, ban mirror, uh, get a certain amount of sieves banned every game. That feels, you know, that feels solid. Okay. Last comment from Mr. Yo. He says top five feels good. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry, yo. Obvious sarcasm from yo. Obvious sarcasm. I'm sure yo is very happy with number five here. Uh, you know, big congratulations. He gets absolutely nothing, but you know, well done. Uh, great, great elo. Congrats, you get zero. ACCM is in the chat. He's saying yo, man. Uh, absolutely brutal, guys. I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm actually so sorry, yo. Like, it was a good run at the end. That's all I can say. It was a good run at the end. And you know, these guys. It's worth mentioning for the YouTube video. They get a last chance qualifier, so there's still two spots remaining. So the invited people were Viper and Tata. So then you had these four, uh, you had Leary, Harris, Sebastian, and BL, and obviously Yo number five gets nothing, sadly. But you know, all these guys have the chance, two more spots left for the tournament. So there is still a chance. Um, okay, I want to end this video now by saying thank you so much for watching, everyone. Hope you guys enjoyed these discussion videos. Hopefully, hopefully the chat on Twitch enjoyed it as well. Um, overall, um, I wouldn't want to see a qualifier like this again, but if we do, if they bring the fixes, it could be a lot better. Uh, I don't have that strong of an opinion. Like if it comes again, I'm not gonna be like raging. I'm just I I think it's a little bit too stressful on the players um but uh but overall i enjoyed trying it out it was fun to be a part of and um and it was good let me know in the comments below what you guys enjoyed uh, about the red bull qualifier and i hope you guys will be tuning in for the event in october i'll be part of it i'm really happy to qualify myself i put in a lot of work and uh yeah paid off so thanks for watching like comment subscribe see you guys next time peace